All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so in this video, I want to test your ability to think logically. All right, and so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to play a clip from this guy, and I'm going to show you the error, and then I want you to follow along to see both the illogic of what he believes and what he teaches with the logic, the simple logic of the scripture. I'll try to make this as easy as possible. Now listen up. Is elevated himself and a, a whiz and a genius in all these other areas but does not know God every day of the week. But that's what I think it's happening here is uh, that one more time, Satan will be loosed, and sure enough, deceive men again, and they will follow him. Men rebel against the God of heaven once again. These people that were born during the tribulation, uh, excuse me, during a thousand years, um, and they're not going to grow up. They're not born Christians any more than we are today. They'll still have to come uh, through Jesus Christ and the same understanding that back in years and years past they died for their sins. The man will rebel. All right, so that's, a, that's enough. To give you an idea, uh, just to recap, he's talking about after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And he's calling that a thousand years after and so he's describing this period after Jesus returns where children are going to be born and and so on and so forth I mean I want to I just want to focus on that this idea that children will be born after Jesus returns now that's what he's teaching now I want you to think logically. Consider this. If there are children born after Jesus returns, then okay, let me let me phrase it this way. Are they born of saved people or are they born of unsaved people? Because his claim is that children will be born and they will not be saved until they turn to God and believe, just like what's going on today. So that's the question. Are you able to think critically, think logically, and answer that question? Are there unsaved people after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven uh, that's the question I want you to think about are there unsaved people after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven alright so I'm gonna ask that a few more times but I want you to consider um, a few verses here and I'm just gonna start off right here in 2nd Peter chapter 3 the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up that's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven the heavens shall pass away. The elements shall melt with, melt with fervent heat. The earth also. And the works that are therein shall be burned up. Alright, so again, I ask. Will there be babies born, unsaved babies born by unsaved parents after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. 
Are you able to think logically? That's the test that I put forth for you today. So now I want you to think about it. Because it's kind of a big deal. Because either the Bible's right, and all these other men are wrong, or all these men are right, and the Bible is wrong. If you're able to be honest to yourself, you have to admit, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, suggests that when Jesus comes, that the heavens and the earth will melt, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. All right? So, all right, so how are there unsaved people living after this? Think about it. I'm pausing and going slow so that you might think about it. How are there unsaved people living after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? Alright, so let's go to another one. Revelation chapter 1. Behold, he comes with clouds. All right, this, keep, this is the same event. All right, if you can't connect the dots, man, God help you. Really. If you're not able to see the, you know, the, it's the same event, then uh, there's nothing I can say to help you. Okay? Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, amen. All right, so this is what I want you to think about. <clears throat> when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, why do all kindreds of the earth well? Why do they well? I mean, put aside your, your phony doctrines and what other men teach just for a moment. And be honest with yourself. And ask and answer that question. Why do all kindreds of the earth wail when they see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven? Why? Why is it? Because we have a contradiction here. Either the Bible is right and all these other men are wrong or all these other men are right and the Bible is wrong. Because just as I just showed you, this guy says that there will be children born after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And it's not just this guy. Alright, so don't give me none of that. It's 99.9% .9 of all the teachers today are teaching the same thing that this guy's teaching. 99.9% .9 and it might actually be more than that. But nevertheless, this is what the mainstream teaching is. This idea that after Jesus comes, there will still be children being born. All right, again, so let's, let's consider this. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Why 
do all kindreds of the earth wail. Why? All right, so obviously it's because they know it's the end of the world. There's no other reason. There's no other reason. If it wasn't the end of the world, they would be wailing in vain. Matthew 24. The sun shall be dark, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Why? Be honest with yourself. Why? Why do all the tribes of the earth mourn? Just be I mean, really, be honest with yourself. Because we have a contradiction with what men teach and what the Bible says. If, if it's not the end of the world and they will continue to live after this, after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, if they're able to live after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, then they mourn in vain doesn't make any sense does it for all the tribes of the earth to mourn in vain just be honest is there anything more important than the truth all right consider this luke chapter 21 the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and there shall be signs in the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, and the seas and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Why? This is Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. When they see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven, men's hearts will fail them for fear. <clears throat> if they are able to live after this event, after this day, if they are continue, if they are able to continue to live, then why are they having heart attacks? Why? are their hearts failing them for fear is it all in vain it, it's in vain if they are able to live after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and they're not saved <clears throat> if they're able to continue having children and all that stuff then they're mourning, wailing, and having their hearts fail. All in vain. All right, and I can't get beyond the second Peter chapter 3. How in the world does the heavens pass away? The elements melting with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. How do you live through that? That's crazy, if you ask me. I, I don't, I don't get it. But that's, that's what they're all teaching, right? Now it's interesting here in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. The whole context of this is in regards to the question asked to Jesus by the disciples: "What shall be the sign of thy coming?" and of the end of the world and of course we can really connect the dots here pretty simply that at the end of the world the angels gather together the elect Jesus sends his angels to gather together the elect and of course this parallels what we read in Matthew 13 with the parable of the wheat and the tares 
the time of the harvest is the gathering together of the wheat and the tares right and this harvest is the end of the world so when the sun is darkened and the moon not given her light and the stars falling from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken it's the end of the world and at the end of the world the, the elect are gathered together right end of the world right as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire so shall it be in the end of this world second Peter chapter 3 verse 10 but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away the great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire this is the end of the world and the angels gather together the elect so how how is it that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven how is it that there are unsaved people still living and still having children how is that logically possible how is it that they're mourning that they're wailing and their hearts are failing them for fear how is it if it's not the end of the world right how is it that they are burned gathered and burned in the fire when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and they're still able to live through it the unsaved how is that possible how is that even possible now let's go to uh, let's go to first John chapter 2 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Then when the world passes away, there is no more sex. It's pretty simple, straightforward stuff, isn't it? Pretty straightforward stuff. Even Jesus says that in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven in the resurrection the resurrection and the gathering together are the same thing the same moment in time when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are gathered together this is the resurrection make no mistake about it first Thessalonians chapter 4 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the resurrection that when he gathers together the elect it's the resurrection it's the end of the world and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord it's interesting 99.9 percent .9 of the preachers today preach 
something that is contrary to the plainly written Word of God. They teach this idea that the unsaved will continue to live after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, which means that the unsaved will be wailing in vain, they will be mourning in vain, and their hearts will be failing them for fear in vain. And then, on top of that, somehow they're going to get burned up and still live through it for a thousand years. And so much so that they're going to be having babies. They're going to continue to have babies somehow. I don't know how. Nobody's properly explained this to me. Why they're mourning, wailing, and having heart attacks, being burned up, melted, dissolved, and somehow still are able to have sex for a thousand years.